Second Chronicles chapter 16. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, 36 years, Basha, king of Israel, that's north, Basha, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, the king of Judah. Now we saw that in chapter 15, chapter 15, verse 9, and he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers of them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance. Like you said, people were coming from Israel to do right. They're getting right with God. They're doing what God has prescribed. They are repenting. They're coming to Jerusalem, the capital for the Jewish people, the God. What's the king of Israel do? He's building roadblocks. He's putting up buildings and houses and cities so they don't go. He's preventing the people who want to get right. To the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Ace, the king of Judah. In chapter 15, read, they were doing it to get right. So you can come in, you couldn't go. And Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord. That's kind of interesting. He needs money, so he runs to the building that is built for God, that has been dedicated to God. He runs to that, the treasures. There were rooms in the temple, courtyards, where they had treasures. And of the king's house. Oh, his house too. I guess God didn't have enough for him. And sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt in Damascus, saying, Now, Syria is a proper spot today of war and tri tribulations and problems. Damascus is where Paul was going to go to persecute Christians. There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Talking to Ben-Hadad. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold from God and from himself. Go break thy lead with Basha, king of Israel, that he may dart, depart from me. So, Ben-Hadad's in league. He's in fellowship with Basha of Israel. They're allies. They're together. They're working together. Asa gets money from the Lord and gets money from his own house. Goes to Ben-Hadad and says, listen, if I give you enough money, will you leave this group of people and come join my group of people? That's what he's saying. Now, you got to think about it before we read on. If you can buy somebody off, would there not be a greater price for that person to go join somebody else against you? There's already been a price laid. You're going to put your trust in someone who you just paid. Well, what if somebody offers him more money than what you give him? Or what if this money was offered that he didn't have anymore? Not really a good, strong, bonding thing that's going on here. Ben Haydad will go for the price of a dollar. That's not a friend. That's not somebody you can trust. Break thy lead with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. I want peace. I'm going to use Syria to help me. And Ben Haydad hearkened unto the king Asa. And sent the captains of his armies against the city of Israel. Now, Asa, Judah, and Benjamin are not attacking Israel. But has not the charge of a bet that if you think about it, if you pay for it, is not the charge put to you. So even though Asa has not attacked Israel... There is a civil war because Asa has caused this to happen by paying the money. And God, in his ways of through the scriptures, is you don't have to be an active person. After all, when Joab killed a man that killed his brother, God charged the other brother of Joab 
and the man that was killed. I don't have their names right now. And he had nothing to do with it. When Ahab is sitting pretty in the field of, of that he's going to make herbs, a plentiful garden, and the prophet comes up to him and says, Thou hast killed. Ahab has no idea what his wife Jezebel had done to Naboth. And God has the prophet walk up to him and say, You're the troublemaker. Uriah has been killed in the hands of Joab with the enemy in their city. And David's prophet walks up to David and says, Thou art the man for a murderer. Jesus says, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. And we've got to stand, and I don't hear it in the pulpits, I don't see it in message quite often. We will stand just by thinking sin. Never mind doing it. Now, I don't know what Asa's heart is on this thought, but if I have Syria do it, I'm free. And that's not the truth. So Ben-Hadad hearkened unto King Asa and sent captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smoked Ijon and Dan, this is all north, Abel Mamim, or Abel Mamim, and all the store cities of Nephetal. And it came to pass when Basha heard it, that's the king of Israel, that he left off building Ramah, that's the place where, you know, we're going to stop you from going into Jerusalem, and we're going to stop you from coming to my land, and let his work cease. So it stopped Basha building his little check house, checkpoint, whatever it is. And it's not that you have a passport. It's not that you have tickets. It's you're not allowed here, and you're not allowed there. So Asa is fighting for, he wants people to come to Jerusalem. And Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Rimmah, that's the city that we're going to stop the people, and the timber thereof. So he has rocks and he has wood. Whereas Basha was building, and he built there Geba and Mizpah. So he took one wicked city against God, and he builds two cities. Now at that time, Haniel, Hanii, the seer, came to Asa the king of Judah. And said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, he paid him, and not relied on the Lord thy God, thy God. Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. They're your enemy. What do you do in hiring them? Then we're going to read, Did not God give you victory in the last chapter over the Ethiopians? How can you mean turn to him? Could you not pray to God, say, God, there are people in Israel who want to come and worship you. We read that in chapter 15. We just read it earlier. Basha, the king of Israel, is trying to stop them. And then when they do come down, he's not allowing them to go back to their homes, which would be in the law of the land that's been prescribed to their inheritance their title deeds, and their ancient landmarks. Would not have God answered Asa in such a way that he's answered him before? How would God answer? I don't know. But Asa never gave God the opportunity. Were not the Ethiopians, chapter 14, verse 9, and the Libans, a huge host. That word huge is that's the only time it's used there. So only one huge in the Bible. And remember, it was a number upon numbers upon numbers. The first multi and only multi military strength. Chapter 15. And very many chariots and horsemen. Yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, 
He, the Lord, delivered them into thy hand. I gave you victory. I helped you. I took care of you. You cried, help. <laughs> Didn't I not help you? What? I can help you with Ethiopians and Libans. I can't help you with your brother, Basha. And I mean brother as far as you're both Jewish people. Did I charge you money or silver to do what I did to the Ethiopians? I gave you silver. I gave you money. I gave you camels. I gave you asses. I gave you tents. I gave you. And it angers God when we go against God and rely on other men, especially in an unsaved man, a non-Jew in the context of the story. And when we as Christians go to unbelievers and say, help! We make God in the eyes of unbelievers. I guess he can't help him. I guess I'll do it. We give God a bad name as Asa has given God a bad day, name. And the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Proverbs 15, 4 says, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. It's not Santa Claus that's watching. It's God. And you're not going to prevent the eyes of God from not seeing what you're doing. To show himself, God, strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him, God. And there's a heart issue. And we've seen in chapter 15, the heart of Asa is perfect in the eyes of God. I was helping you. I answered your prayers. I took care of you. Why have you forsaken me? Herein, from now on, thou hast done foolishly, relying on an unsaved enemy, relying on money, relying on gold, not relying on God. Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. He was in a time of peace and rest, rest and peace, peace and rest, because he relied on God. Now he's turned his reliance to something else, someone else. God says, okay, take my peace from And for a Christian, when there's trials and tribulations and we run to someone besides God, well, God just withholds the peace, love, joy, patience, long-suffering. If God wants us to be help, have receive help from someone, if we go to God first, he will show us who to go to. He will direct us. But Asa has turned to the world before he's turned to the Lord. Now watch his reaction. Someone has gone up to a, a Christian and said, you're doing it wrong. And there's two reactions. You can repent, get right, thank him. And learn how to grow or then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in prison house no repentance David handled his a lot better with, with uh, I believe it was Nathan thou art the man oh Lord God I am so sorry and we see a so one psalm Written about David's contrite heart, David's bitter weeping to God that he has sinned against the Lord. And God has forgiven him his sin. Asa, thou art the man. Go to jail. Arrest him. For he was in a rage with him because of this thing. What thing? rebuking Asa and when you're in any public ministry and you rebuke the heathen this guy's not he I mean he's of the children of Israel man they get so mad at you if they could they would chew you out and spit you out there has been no men in the works of the Bible 
I believe it was Tyndale, and I could be wrong, but they killed the guy, took his body out of the ground, burned it again, and threw the ashes into the water, river. That's how angry they were. They were so angry the dead body of the man was not good enough. And you got to learn not everybody loves God, the word of God in Jesus Christ. He comes in a rage. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. Boom! Preacher comes in to Asa and he gets angry. He gets wicked. He is churned from God. And there goes his love and charity. Now he's picking on the people. Does that sound familiar somebody who's been reading about? Is that not the story of Solomon? He gets into all these wives and all these gods, and man, he's chastising us. Hell! We need hell! And his son answers stupidly. This is not the way how to act when God sends a man to you to help correct you. Yeah, he had his toes stepped on, no pun included. Don't we get like that? The, I've had a, I had a situation real, real uh, sudden, and man, my body just attacked, and my thoughts are like, no, they're under the blood. I'm wrong, but I've been stepped on, and it hurts. It hurts, and we got to turn the other cheek. Asa didn't. And behold, the acts of Asa, first and last. Lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah in Israel. We've already gone through those. And Asa, in his 30 and ninth year. Now, the chapter started off 30 and sixth year. For three years later, of his reign was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceedingly great. Both his feet, two of them. The pain, ex extreme pain, according to the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. The Bible doesn't tell us what it is in Hebrew or Greek. No Greek, but I had to say that. What did Asa have? He had real painful dogs. His feet were exceedingly great. Pain, according to the Holy Spirit. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Now what did Jesus say? Jesus said, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. Now, the complication here is, if you need a doctor, okay, Jesus Christ said, God is not against going to a doctor. But you must first go to him. You must first turn to God saying, God, I got this ailment in my life. I'm going to see Dr. So-and-so. Lord God, before I go, can I pray over it? Lord God, will you help me? Lord, my wife is going to have a procedure tomorrow, praying yesterday and praying today. Lord God, will you go beforehand? Would you take care of the situation? Will you be with her? Will you make her well? Lord God, you do what needs to be done. And then you get to the hospital. They were going to do a whole total different procedure. Thank you, Lord, for stepping in. But Asa gets an ailment in his feet and he looks in the yellow pages foot doctor proctology i think that is proctology someone he's a foot doctor he goes to the doctors he doesn't go to god what a big difference between chapter 15 lord chapter 14 hell this enemies come against us and only by you god can we win hell Oh, my feet are killing me. And God said he's angry with me because I went and hired this guy. He sends this man in my face. How dare he do that? Dr. So-and-so, help my feet. I'm going to apply a little pun here. And I, 
I'm going to do it. If you don't like it, he should have gone to Dr. Soul of God, rather Dr. Soul, to help his feet. The one that can handle the The one that made his feet. The ones that made the bones in his feet, the muscles, the nerves. Look where he's gone now. I reject God totally. I'm going to turn to man. This is a man that was right with God. This is a man that had a perfect heart with God. This is a man that loved the Lord. This is a man that trusted in God. This is a man God says, I'm giving you peace. I'm going to give you rest. I am with you, Asa. And he has turned all the way in the wrong way against God. Don't think it cannot happen to you. I have seen good and I've seen great Christians fall and go away. And some of them because God sent someone in their path to say you're doing wrong. Get out of here. Don't want you no more. Don't tell me what I'm doing is wrong. Okay, fine. See you later, Asa. See ya. Handle your, handle your disease. And the disease for Asa with his feet, for, for a Christian, the disease is God's against you. It ain't going to get better. And Asa, in 30 and 30 year of his reign, was diseased, uh, uh, past tense, in his feet, until his disease, present tense, was exceeding great. Yet his disease, look at that, three times, he sought not to the Lord, but to the physician. And that's it. And Asa slept in his father's. He died. He didn't die of the foot, maybe not, but the last thing of this living thing. It says, Behold the acts of Asa, first and last, are written in the book of Kings. Let me add a little footnote about Asa. He had terrible aching feet that he didn't come to me. Next, and Asa slept with his father. He died. And he died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. Died 41 years old. That was nine years ago for me. I'm 50 today. What was his reign? Yeah, we don't know how old he was. Yeah, we don't know how old he was. 49 years of his reign. 39 years of his reign, he had the disease. 42 years with his feet. I know that. The other one was the error, but two years. Two years looks like his feet were killing him. And for two years, he didn't get relief until he died. Now, where is he today? The Old Testament? I can't tell you. I'm going to assume he's in hell. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. Not age, I was wrong. And they buried him in his own scepter. Notice how that's a plural. How many scepters do you need when you're dead? which he had made for himself in the city of David. And Jesus didn't even get a scepter for himself. And they laid in the bed, which was filled with sweet odors and diverse kinds of spices prepared by the apothecary. That would be like a drug is art. Jesus didn't even have that done. Joseph of Amelia and uh, Nicodemus kind of fastly, quickly bound him up because we're getting to the, to the Sabbath. The spices and all that didn't come to Sunday morning. Prepared by the Ocuparius Ark. Again, that's a druggist kind of thing. He's known for uh, mixing things together. And they made a very great burning for him. That would be like, you know, your bonfire, you know. They do that over in Africa and in other areas of the world. They make a great burning. The bonfire type. I don't know, maybe a picture's hell. 